Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf. Menach is Nun Aleph. We begin on Nun Amid Beis, almost at the bottom. So it's four lines from the bottom to Nun Hasam. We have a Mishnah further in the further down in Maseches Menaches, which speaks about the Chavite Kohen Gadol. So that's the um, daily uh, Mincha offering of a Kohen Gadol, which we uh, somewhat discussed yesterday. It consists of an Isorain of flour, which is then brought into the Migdash and split into two parts, half of which is offered in the morning. It's uh, fried, baked. We discussed that yesterday, and to uh, these loaves, and uh, the same happens in the evening. Not awesome. Chavite kain gadol. So this mincha, which is called chavite kain gadol, where do we process it? Lishasan, the uh, kneading process when they mix the uh, flour and the varichasan, and the um, forming of the of the breads. The afiyasan, likewise, their baking, all takes place bifnim. Inside the uh, the Azar, inside the Beis Hamidosh. Rashi explains because, in contrast to a regular mincha, where the um, midas yovesh, the uh, container for dry materials like flour, does not have kedusha to the extent that it it would be. Uh, Mikalish the content which would disallow it from being taken out of the Migdash, lest it become puzzle, you know, because of Yaitse. That's standard procedure, but here it's different. Typically, Chacham do not advise them to be Mikalish that Kli because Rashi says it's something for everybody, it's, uh, everybody has access to it, uh, which poses a concern that, you know, a person might be less than careful, not realize that he can't take the material back out. So they they instructed that the kli, kli hayavish, which is typically used to measure the flour for a, for a regular standard common was not sanctified, does not have that ability to endow kedusha on the content. But here, by the chavitin, which as we explained was split into two, so they used the half isar in measuring cup, that had kedusha, that was you know exclusive for the kohen gadol's use and the kohenim. So there's all concern. Regarding Yaitse, they, they know how to be careful, so therefore the material was Kaddish, the, you know, the flour, the Mincha material, in which case it has to be processed and, um, you know, baked in the base Hamidash. Lishasan, Barichas, and everything, the kneading, the Aricha, the Afia, all Bifne. That's one Allah. But that's Shabbos. Secondly, uh, it was uh, processed even on Shabbos. So you bake new bread even on Shabbos. Munan how do we know? That um, it is the Eich Shabbos. I'm Rav Huna, so we have no less than four sources. Rav Huna is Tufine, which we uh, referred to yesterday as the pasuk describing the uh, the mincha. It's to Tufine. Mincha as pitim takre brech nechayich l'Hashem. Tufine, as we learned, tells us that it has to be pleasant, it has to be fresh. Tefena noe. Has to be fresh. We offered them an We'll break it yesterday. By the time Shabbos comes around, it's uh, exposed to the you know the air and it's bloated and it's a little bit unfresh. In Shafale, it's it's affected by the air by the and therefore you must make it fresh on Shabbos. So Shabbos is mincha is processed on Shabbos. Maskal Rav Yosef, why not do it yesterday and keep it fresh? Contain it. Aim of the cover Slabiarka. Cover it with uh, buried under uh, greenery, keep it fresh. Okay, so now we have, an, have to have another source that is allowed on Shabbos. Data Bishmol Tanos, we have another source from the uh, Bismedrish or Bishmoel. The Pasad uses the term Te'asa in describing this Menchal Machbas, Bashemen, Te'asa. Te'asa is an extra word to tell you. You do it even on Shabbos. The Asa means I feel a bit too much, even when there is Tumah around. Right, so 
it's like any other public carbon when the uh, Kohanim, etc. Atami, you could still continue with the process. Abaya Omar, here comes a third source, Amakra. The, pas- the Pasuk in describing this Mincha calls it Seilas Mincha Tamit. So the word Tamit teaches us Harehi Kiminchas Timidin. That the Chavitik um, the, the, um, has similar status. So the mincha that comes along with a carbon tamid, the daily, you know, tamid, the accompaniment is the minchas tamid, which of course is brought daily, even on Shabbos. Likewise, this mincha as well. Rav Amar comes a fourth source. Al machmas. Pasuk says that the minchas chavitin is processed through a machvas through a frying pan. Now the frying pan was certainly considered a klisha race and. Um, would affect its content. Likewise, anything placed in that machvas acquires a higher level of kedusha kedusha saguf. In which case, if you made it yesterday, once it stays overnight, it's puzzled because of lina. Al machvas tells us malam shetuna kli needs a kli, needs the machvas. We have let me ask if we'll do this yesterday. You bake it yesterday. By the time today comes around, by the time Shabbos comes around, if celeb lina becomes disqualified because of lina. Okay, so once again we learn that the minchas chavitim kain gadol is fully processed on Shabbos. We have no less than four sources to teach us that. Tanik of the Rava. Here's a brisa with the fourth source, like Rava al Machmas. This pasuk teaches malamish tunei kli. We need kli shares, and that explains why it's done on Shabbos. Otherwise. It would become possible through Lina. Now the Brisa continues. So, how much oil goes into the Minchas Chavit? Is it like a standard Mincha? Just, uh, you know, a lug? Let's say like a liter, right? Or is it more? The Pasuk, which says Bashemen, tells you that it's more than a standard. Bashemen, Lahoisev Lashemen. He's coming to teach you that it's more than your standard mincha. Otherwise, leave out the word Bashemin. And I already know that it needs somewhat of oil because Al Machvas tells you that it's fried in a, in a Machvas, in a frying pan. Apparently, it has oil. What's the point of adding the word Bashemin? Oh, La Shemin. To teach that you meant to add more. Oil in the standard fear. Okay, so we know we add. How much more? We need the akama. We don't know uh, how much more. Answer is harini done. Here comes some sort of learning arrangement. Let's see. Nemar kan shemen. Nemar lahalam. Binchas nasachem shemen. We have the word shemen over here. And the same we have by minchas nasachem, which is a mincha which accompanies, you know, a carbon. Every carbon comes along with minchas nesach. And we apply the same ratio as we have a minchas nesachim to our mincha as well. Again, nemar kan shemen, benemar lahal, b'minchas nesachim shemen, which allows for a connection. Malahal, just like over there, by minchas nesachim, it shloishes lugan li sarim. It's three lug of oil. Per isarin, that's by a, a sheep, a carbon that comes in a sheep form. You bring a minchas nesachim, which has, which consists of isarin of flour with three lug of oil. So we import that formula to our mincha as well. Malahalam shloishes lugim isarin. Afkan here as well shloishes lugim isarin. So minchas chavitin, which has isarin, requires three lug. So that's three times. As much as a standard mincha, which only has one log per isarin. Says the Gemara, hold it, who says that it's so much oil? Perhaps take a different approach and bring it down to just one log, like a regular mincha. And the Gemara later will tell us that at this twist in the road, so to speak, the Gemara is um, sort of putting aside that source 
uh, that we cited a minute ago, Bashem and tells you to add, sort of suspending that that source for the, for the for the time being. According to one uh, approach in the Gemara, it's a different uh, Tana who's speaking now, who doesn't have that uh, point of reference, which triggers uh, the obvious question: Who says that you're meant to have more oil than your regular mincha? Okay, so take a different approach. We have the word shaman by the Chavitin over here. We have the, the word shaman by a regular, voluntary, you know, do, donated mincha, which suffices with just one look. Malahan, look, echad, afkan, look, echad, just like over there, one look suffices, perhaps the same here. So we start up in a dilemma. In the middle of the, uh, of the chart, we have the minchas Chavitin. To the right, we have the Minchas Nesachim, which has three log. To the left, we have a Minchas double with one log. Who's he more comparable to? What's a fairer, you know, comparison? So let's see. Nearly me daima. Let's see. Who he's more daima, who's more comparable to? Which one's a better match? Which one of these two options, these two possible sources, has more things in common with a Minchas Chavitin? Certainly, the uh, the minchas nesachem with the three log why done and we learn tavshat mitavshat the chavitin which is tavshat which has elements which begin with a tav base shin test as we'll see in a minute mitavshat from the minchas nesachem which, which likewise features those four elements which are as follows actually uh, some take it down to three so tav is uh, the tadir they're both um, very common. Right, the minchas chavitin is a daily mincha, and likewise the um, minchas nesachim is certainly a daily affair because uh, it's brought together with the tamid every day. Okay, then we have doicha uh, shabbos, with doicha tumah. Right, both are considered um, like sort of public karbanis, which override shabbos and any tumah concerns. So you bring it on Shabbos, and even if the Kahana Matam, you still proceed. So these are unique commonalities between the Chavitan of the Kohen Gadol and the Mechas Nesachim, which are not found by a regular, privately donated Mincha. You don't bring it on Shabbos, it's not Betuma, it's not necessarily a daily thing, it's not a daily requirement, right? Vein done in Tavshat, Mishayin Tavshat, rather than learning the hour Chavitan, which has Tavshat, from a regular Mincha, which doesn't have that. So we connect it to the minchas nesachim, and we give it three lug of oil. No, so perhaps prefer the other uh, route, connected to a minchas nedava. Done in yagel mi yagel. For we find we find several commonalities between the chabitin and a minchas nedava. Yagel. It has uh, no less than three unique uh, unique commonalities. We have the Yachid, Glal Atzman Levayna. They're both a privately offered mincha. The Chavitin is uh, the King Gadol's, and the Mincha Sintav is a private person. Glal Atzma, it's, a, it's on its own, it's an independent offering, as opposed to Mincha's Nusach, which, which is an accompaniment, so it's a t- different type of uh, realm. And Levayna. They, um, they both require Levayna. As opposed to the Minchas um, Nesachim, which doesn't have these uh, features. Val Yochid Begal Atzma Levoina Vein Don Yagel Mosheni Yagel. Rather than comparing Minchas Chavitim, which is considered Yagel, which has these features, from the um, to the Minchas Nesachim of Avakar, which doesn't have Yagel. Okay, so that's the uh, sort of conclusion here. That Minchas Chavitim has more oil than, uh, than, than the standard, has three lug, because we compare it to the... Um, no, so, so now we're stuck, sorry. So now we're, we're stuck, right? <laughs> well, we thought it was an easy shidduch, comparing the Chavitan uh, to the Minchas Nesachim uh, over the Minchas Nedava. Well, it's not so simple. We have uh, uh, several commonalities going between uh, Chavitin and the, uh, the Nadav as well. So which way should we go? Comes a new Pasuk now. Rabbi Shmuel. Oh, Benoi. 
Shal Brecham Brecha Imer. I have a passage for you to teach us. Amechas Chavitim features three log of oil. Soilas, Mincha, Tamid. Okay, there's the Lashon that the Pasuk uses by the Minchas Chavitin to teach us that it's like a Minchas Tamid. Harayiloch ke Minchas Tamid. The Minchas Chavitin has the same status as a Mincha which comes uh, with a Karban Tamid, a daily Tamid. Ma Minchas Tamidin Okay, so now we know that we compare it to the Minchas and Sacham of the Tamid. Just like over there, it's with three lug, Puri Saran, Avzu, here as well. It runs the same ratio. Gimulug and Lisaran. Okay? So let's just uh, break down the, you know, the steps here. How much oil in a Minchas Chavit? Well, Machmas on its, own, on its own would tell you there's some oil. Bashem tells you to add. Okay, so once we know we've established that you add, how much do you add? We compare it to the Minchas and Sachim, which has three lug. But compared to Mechas Nadav, which only has one look, comes a Rishmol to new Pasuk. The Pasuk compares our Mechas to a Mechas Tamid with three look. Reb Shimon Oimer, he says, I'll tell you how we know it's three. Reba Khan Shemen, Reba Mechas Kavasim Shemen. We know, we already established from that Pasuk, Al Machas Ba Shemen that the Chavitin requires more oil, more oil than standard. So it's sort of going back to that source, which we sort of suspended for a, a little bit. Rav Shimon takes us back to the original source. We have a Rishmal source, we have Rav Shimon, who's now taking us back to the original source. That the actual wording in the Pasuk, al Machos Vashem, tells you more oil than necessary, more oil than standard is necessary, right? The question just is how much? There, see, there are two issues here. Does it have the regular oil? You know, the regular quantity? Or do we add more? So true, we have that Pasuk Machos Bashem that we add more, but how much more? Does it go from one to two or from one to three? Says Rav Shimon, we know that we add. How much do we add? Rav Shimon, I'm a Reba Khan Shemin, Reba Mechas is Kvasim Shemin. So once we know that we add, Reba Khan Shemin, Torah added more than regular. So we go look for another instance where the Torah added required more than the standard look. Let's go to Minchas Kvasen. The Minchas that comes along with the Kvasen, which we said before has three looking. And likewise over here we have three. Reba Khan Shemen, Reba Minchas Kvasen Shemen, Ma'al Hal, just go over there. Shloishas Lugan Lisar, it's three look per Isar, and Afkan here is all by the Chavitin, Shloishas Lugan Lisar, it's three look to Isar. That's going pretty grand, who says? I understand that we, we know we have to add, but perhaps only add. Go from one to two. Look, Puri Saran. Take a different approach. Compare our expanded oil requirement to the mincha that comes along with a par, with an ayah, with a cow, with a ram, which also has more than the standard look that comes with this, you know, standard donated mincha. It has more, it has two look per Yusarim, but just two, not three. Suffice with two. Riba kan shemen. Riba be minchas kaparim be ilm shemen. Malahan just took over the air. It's only two look per Yusarim. Shnei lugan Yusarim. Afkan perhaps over here by the Chavitin as well. Shnei lugan Yusarim. It's two look per Yusarim. Okay, so now we have a choice. In the matter, who do we compare the Chavitin to? We know we have to add. That's been established. But how much to add? Compared to the Kvasim, which is three, or to the Param Be'ilam, which is two. Near the Midam, let's see. What's a fairer comparison? Don and Mincha Bo Yisorin. Mincha Bo Yisorin. It makes more sense to compare the Chavitin, which is a Mincha consisting of a Yisorin, a flower, to another Mincha, Mincha that comes with a Kevis, which likewise has a Yisorin, a flower. That's a, uh, a more similar comparison. And since over there we have three log oil here as well, vein done rather than do a, uh, doing a connection between a mincha ba isarin, our mincha which has a isarin a flower, and connecting it to the parim ba'il which have much more than one isarin a flower. So it's dissimilar in that, in that sense. A mincha ba bays the gimel By the pirates two is, by the islets two isarin, by the pirates three. So that is the, the conclusion. 
says Rabbi Shimon. So it's a one-two step system. We know that minchas chavitim requires more than standard. Standard, what I mean is the uh, you know the standard um, donated mincha, which is one isar and a flour, one log of oil. How do I know it's more? Because it says machvas bashemal with oil, which is obvious because you can't fry with it, right? So you have to add. How much do you add? Let's compare it to another mincha which has more than standard oil, more than the standard amount. And the conclusion is we compare it to the Michas Kvasim, which has three Lugim per Isar, likewise over here. Now the more will dwell on that uh, point that we sort of raised before. You see, again, the steps were like this. We started with a Pasuk Amachas Pashemen. You have to add oil, right? How much? So we attempted to compare it to Michas Nesachim, which has three Lug. The response was, no, maybe it's compared to a regular donated mincha, a mincha sinta, which is only one look. So we went back and forth. Until Rabbi Shmuel came up with another pasuk, Sirlis mincha tamid, that our chavitin is compared to mincha's tamid with three look. Rabbi Shimon says, well, um, I know you need more oil than standard. How much more? Is it three? Is it two? And that was the conclusion. Now, let's go back again. So, we said we need more than oil and regular. Compared to Mechaz Nesachim, three, look. No, maybe it's just like a Mechaz Dab, which, which is one look. Well, one look is not adding. That's standard. That's standard fear. That's the minimal requirement. Hoga Vakasha, so it's a bit hard to understand this sort of back and forth in the Gemara. Amrus Bashem, and first you start with the Pasuk Bashem, where you learned, Lois of Lashem, and you have to add more than standard. And then you come back and you sort of question that. Vodatani, then you come back and you say, Namar Khan Shaman, we never Mikhasandava Shaman, we have Shaman by us, we have Shaman Mikhasandava perhaps. Compare it to Mikhasandava, which is only a regular log. But it can't be a regular log. You already established you need more than a log. So we're gonna have three uh, three ways to answer this question. Um Rabbi, Iman Tana Basham Lhoisab Shimani. We have two people speaking in this price, right? We have Reb Shimon, who was actually mentioned only at the end. Says Abayi, really, he was speaking from the outset. He's the one that came up with that initial source that Machvas Bashem teaches us they need more oil than regular. Because Machvas tells you it's a regular mincha with oil, and Bashem says you add more. So it was him speaking. Ubedina man kamahada Rabbi Shmuel. But then when they proceeded, you know, when he proceeded to try to confirm the, the amount that you're adding, and he went to the Mechas and Sachem, which was three, came to be Shmuel, who didn't hold to that initial source of Machvas Shemin as a source for adding oil. He came up with the next source later on, right? So he challenged the Shemin. He says, no, no, you can't really learn from Mechas and Sachem. Perhaps it's just one log, like Mechas and because he was the one who didn't hold to that source of Shemin. Ubedina man kamahad Rabbi Shmuel. He's the one. Rabbi Shmuel is the one who challenged Bedina with this back and forth, and challenged Rabbi Shimon. So there are two different people speaking here. It's not a contradiction. Ultimately, Rabbi Shmuel did come up with another source. His pasuk, which was Seilas Mincha Tamid, that you add like a Mincha Tamid, which is three look. That's one answer. Rav Huna Rav Vishu Amar Kula Rabbi Shmuel Bnei Shor Rechon Brakehi. The truth is, the entire Bryce until you know the very end is Rishmol speaking. It's all one person. And the Bryce reads like this: We start with the pasuk of Machmas Bashemen, from where we learn Loisel Hashemen. You add more uh, oil than standard. Deal with Boil Hashemen because if it's only to tell you that it requires basic basic amount of oil, oil at all, like Tzorach, it's unnecessary to tell us. Given the Chsibba Al Machmas. Because the Pasuk already refers to it as al machvas, which means it's like a regular minchas machvas. Minchas machvas, a regular minchas machvas, which needs, which needs oil. So to, to introduce oil to begin with, we don't need the word bashemen. So why bashemen? To add. More than standard. But then the Gemara sort of questions itself. Right? Rishmael himself questions it. Oh yeah, no, yellow like boy, perhaps. The, the added word Bashem is not going to add anything. 
It's simply teaching that oil is required to begin with, which I wouldn't necessarily know on my own. So you're sort of challenging his premise. Why? What does that mean? Dila kasa rachman of Hashem. If not for the word Hashem, how I mean, I would think perhaps tiyavik minchas chayte. Sure, you bring it in a machvas in a frying pan. But you don't fry it. It's like a minchas chayte, a sinner's mincha which has no oil. So it's not a given that you have oil, and that's why the pasuk would have to say Hashem, right? So who's to say you add more than regular? Hadur Amar comes back to Rishmol. He says, so these all these steps are sort of like embedded in his words. It's true, granted. Perhaps you're right. The word Bashemin is simply coming to introduce oil at all, not to add more than regular. Okay, let's say, but you can still source more oil than regular. Tasey Medina. By way of connection, by way of sourcing it and comparing it to another mincha. And that's why he went to the minchas nesachim, right? Just like over there, it's three lugas, here it's, here it's three lugas as well. But Don Din of last line, he tried to, uh, you know, make these comparisons. It didn't work out because then he challenged himself. Well, if you can compare it to the minchas nesachim with three lug, perhaps compare it to the minchas and double with just one lug. And that necessitated the new source. And that required the new pasik, the new pasik. Of Soilas, Mincha, Tamid, Kemesayim, Rishmol, Milsa, as Rishmol concluded his words. So basically, it's all sort of a Rishmol speaking back and forth on his own terms. Is it from the word Bashem that we learn extra oil? No. Okay, perhaps we'll just compare it to a Mechas Sacham. Well, who's to say that's a fair comparison? Compare it to a Mechas Dab with just only one look. Comes the Pasuk, Soilas, Mincha, Tamid, three look. Okay, so that's the second approach in understanding the Raisa. Here comes a third. Rabbi Amakula Rab Shimon. Actually, it's all Rab Shimon speaking, rather than Rabbi Shmuel. It's Rab Shimon speaking. And what he meant to say is, look, we really have a pasuk Bashemin to add more oil than standard. But the point of discussing it further was to say, look, maybe. Um, Maybe we wouldn't need the Pasuk. Well, let's see. He meant, like, he meant like this. We start with Bashemin, right? That was the uh, original source. Lois Hashemin tells you more oil than, than uh, standard. Dilek Boil Hashemin were simply to teach you that you need oil at all. That wouldn't be necessary. Once it says a machvas, we compare it to a minchas machvas, which has oil, kemachvas damu. Now comes the discussion as follows. Now why does the Torah have to trouble itself to spell out b'shem to teach us this added oil without that source? I can just figure it out by comparing him to a um, minchas nesachim, which has three lug of oil, and that triggered that whole sort of discussion back and forth. So he attempted to compare it to this one, but the challenge was perhaps we'll compare it to the other one, which only has one log. That explains why the Torah has to spell out the word Basham. To require more oil than your regular mincha. But then as per the next question. Fine, you add, but how much do you add? You're telling me it's three lug? Who's to say it's three lug? Maybe it's only two lug, like a mincha of a param ve'elam. Right? So there's two separate issues here. One question is, is it just a standard amount of oil? One lug, or is it more? Okay, if it's more, how much more? Hada amar. Tiyavik minchas param ve'elam. So Rav Shimon himself came back and says, well, uh, who's to say it's three lug? Perhaps it's like the mincha of param ve'elam, which is only two lug. Hada amar. That was a conclusion that we compare it to a mincha of a kevis, which has the same amount of flour. It's a better connection, a better comparison. Hence, the mincha chavit also has three lug of oil. Okay, so at the end of the day, all agree regarding the amount of flour, the amount of oil, mincha chavitin. It's way more than the 
regular oil requirement. It's one isarn with three look of oil. The question just is, where we learn it from? Is it from the extra word Vashemen, which tells us that there's more oil than regular? How much oil we compare it to the Minchas Kvasim, which has three lug? Or do we go to Rishmael, who has the other Pasuk of Selus Mincha to compare it to Minchas Tamed with three lug per isar? We turn to Amit Beis and the Mishnah. Says the Mishnah, Liminu Koyin Achar Tachtav. So yesterday we referred to a case where Koyin Gadol, who's meant to bring this offering, passes away. So what happens if he, he wasn't replaced yet? Okay, so position is vacant, awaiting uh, you know, the election of the new Kohen Gadol. What happens in the interim? Who brings the Minchas Chavitim, which is an obligation upon the Kohen Gadol? Who's going to uh, bring this offering? Who's going to pay for it? The public funds it. The departed Kohen Gadol's um, inheritor, the uh, uh, heirs, his, his two sons do it. They have to uh, finance it. It's their obligation. So it stays in the family until uh, Kohen Gadol comes into office. Furthermore, says the Mishnah, when it's uh, brought in this type of circumstance, instead of bringing a sarin, which is split, you know, half in the morning, half at night, here, you bring a fully sarin in the morning and a fully sarin at night. We'll see this from the Pesuk. I'm going to one Pran Rashi, there's no Machlekes on this, Rabbi Shimon Shima and Rabbi Yudah both concur on this. Tanar Okay, so what are, what are the uh, sources for this halacha? Kegodl Shemais V'loy minu koyin achar tachtav. Kegodl passes away and there's no replacement as of yet. Menayin shetayim en chosay kreib min shal yarshim. How do we know the yarshim? This is Rabbi Yudah speaking, of course. How do we know the yarshim will bring the menchas chavit and tamu loy mar rakoyin mashiach tachtav mi bana v'yasa oisa. Mi bana teaches us that in this type of case when the koyin gadol, koyin mashiach is the anointed koyin, koyin gadol leader, passes away, his one of his sons, his children, will be obligated to continue the uh, the mincha until a new kohen gadol comes onto the uh, onto the scene. Yochel yakreni chatzoyin. Perhaps they continue the same tradition. They bring half at a time, like the father did. Tamaloimar oisa it completely. Kula lechatzia. They bring a complete isarin rather than half. Did Rabbi Yudah Rabbi Shimon Oimar? We have another pasuk, Chok Oilam. Chok Oilam teaches us Mishal Oilam. Oilam means the, the Oilam, you know, the Tzibar. The public will uh, pay for it by way of the uh, Trumas Halishka money, you know, from the Machsa Shekels. And the words, Kalul Taktar, tell you, Shtei Kula Baktara. According to Amshan Rashi, it means that you burn the whole thing, which means to say that uh, you burn it, and also that uh, it's brought as a complete. Uh, Isorin, rather than half at a time, um, you know, that the, as, um, as the Kohen God will bring. Here it's a full Isorin in the morning and at night. Okay, so we have two sources. One for Rabbi Yehuda, that the sons bring it. One, Rabbi Shimon's, that the Tzibur brings it. Ask the Gemara, is this Pasuk even extra? How could we apply it for this Halacha? This entire Pasuk is needed for something else. Vahai, this Pasik Hakoy na Mashiach, this Pasik Lahi Das is coming for this purpose. Regarding a Kohen Gadol who passed away and who's obligated to bring the Mincha. How you bail the Sanya is needed for a different Allah and a different Braisa. Which begins by quoting the Pasik Zekar but Aaron Nivanov Ashiakribul Hashem Biyami Mashach Isa. This is the current the carbon that Aaron and his sons will bring Biyami Mashach Isa on the day of his inauguration. Yachil. You are an abonav, makriven carbon echad. Perhaps it sounds like Arna Kayin and his sons will share, will contribute just one carbon together when, on the day of their inauguration, when they are nimshach, when they are anointed, when they are appointed. Is that so? They share one carbon? No, I Hashem. Although we began with a singular reference, ze carbon, like it's one carbon. But we conclude with, with Hashem Yakrivu, they will be marked with many karbanis. We learn from here, Aaron b'fnei atzmoi, Ubanav b'fnei atzmoi. 
totally separate obligations. The Kohen Gadol, who in this case was Aaron Akain, brings his own carbon every day, actually. And his sons bring, of course, only the day that they are, uh, on the day that they are uh, inaugurated. So the word Bonab is referring to his sons, a Lukahan Medioites. A regular Kayin brings a Menchas Chavitin. On the day of his inauguration, when he's introduced to the Avoida the first time, he brings that special Mencha. Atoimer. Kayin Medioites. So you're uh, suggesting that even a regular Kayin, a Kayin Hedjit, who's not a Kayin Gadol, brings a Menchas Chavitin on that first day. Perhaps it only applies to Kayin Gadol on his first day. So let's take a look at the Pasuk again. So this first part of the Pasuk is referring to a Kayin Gadol. Kayin Mashiach, Tach Tamibonov. That even when Arna Kayin passes away and there's a new Kayin Gadol appointed, a Kayin Mashiach, Tach Tamibonov, he will continue the tradition, he'll bring a Minchas Chavitin, as per uh, Kohen Gadol's obligation, Harei Kohen Gadol almost, this addresses the standard obligation of Kohen Gadol to bring a Minus Chavitin on a daily basis. Homani Mekayim Bonav. Why does the Pasuk add Bonav? Elu Kahanam Adyaitis. That comes to teach us that even a regular Kohen, a plain Kohen, a Kohen had it, which is uh, referred to as Bonav because Aaron Akainu was the Kayin Gadol and his sons were the Kayin Hanamidiyaitis, right? Even that type of Kayin will bring a Minchas Chavitin on the day of his inauguration. So clearly the Pasuk is completely used up. A, it refers to the regular Minchas Chavitin of a Kayin Gadol. B, a Minchas Chavitin that a Kayin had it will bring upon his inauguration. So there's nothing left. There's no Pasuk available to teach us Rabbi Yudas Halach. As per our Mishnah, as per our discussion here, that the Kohen passes away, uh, in the interim, his sons are obligated to fill in and you know, bring their father's uh, Chavitin. Where's the source for that? The answer is like this. We can find it in this Pasuk as well. There's an extra Mem. Im Kain, if it's only, only coming to tell you, Rabbi Dezalach, that the Yerushim of a Kohen Gadol have to continue this tradition until the new Kohen Gadol is appointed, Lichtav Kra, and the Pasuk would, would just say, HaKohen HaMashiach Tachtav. Bonav Yase. At the uh, the Bonav, they bring the uh, the Mincha after the father's passing until further notice. My me Bonav, what's the extra mem? Shamas Minotati. That allows us to learn another halach as well. That uh, every every uh, son of a Kohen Gadol, so to speak, meaning every Kohen had it. Again, the sons here is a reference to Aaron Akain, so his sons are Kohen Mediatis. Basically, the point is every Kohen had it, brings a Minchas Chavitin once a lifetime on the day of his Chinuch, the day of his inauguration. Okay, so we clarified Rabbi Huda's, we confirmed Rabbi Huda's source. As per our Mishnah, Kangala passes away in the interim until further appointment. Who brings the uh, Minchas Chavitin? His Yarsh. Based on this Pasik, Mibonav Yasois. Rab Shimon Hay Oysa, my Avadle. Now, Rab Shimon had a different source, of course, Kalal Taktar, right? Chak Oilam Kalal Taktar, the the community finances it, and it's a complete mincha. Rather than, you know, the standard half and half mincha, it's a complete Isarain. So, what does he do with Rab Yudas Pasak of Oysa, which likewise taught us that it's a complete Isarin rather than halves? Rab Shimon Hay Oysa, my Avadle, what does he do with Oysa? My boy, that's coming for a different purpose. Let's goes back to yesterday's mission. Kangala passed away. And immediately they uh, replaced him with a new one, same day. So, the um, morning offering had already been brought. Okay? So, half of the Yisrael was taken care of in the morning, and we have a half sitting here. Comes the new Kohen Gadol, let's call him Shemai, to do his afternoon offering. Can he just dip into the uh, remaining half that was left over by Rubain? No. Can he just bring a half Yisrael, that's all he needs? No. Shalai Yavi, Chatz Yisrael mi right? So, Kohen Gadol Shemais, Uminu Achet Tachtav, you can't just bring his half a yisarn, nor can he take the 
half Yisrael left over by Reuben. Oisa. He has to bring a full Yisrael. We typically, minu machtsisa, but we have a possible for that. We discussed yesterday, u machtsisa, the extra vav, right? Covers this case. U machtsisa, to tell you that in this case, he has to bring a full one and split it. Why do we need a new Pasuk today? Vav Leidar Shem does not dwell on the Vav, and therefore he needed a new Pasuk. Okay, so we addressed uh, how Rab Sh- what Rab Shimon does with Rabida's Pasuk, and what about Rabida with Rab Shimon's Pasuk? Rabida hai Chak Oilom What does Rabida do with Chak Oilom? Since he has his own source for the Halachis. Chuk Oilom Tehei. It's coming to teach. It's coming to teach us that this uh, concept that a kaingola brings a mechas chavitin is not limited to the time of the mishkan of Aaron Akain. It's ongoing for all generations. Every kaingola has this obligation. The words kol taktor lamli. What's that for? Mubayil look at the sign. It's coming for the halacha as follows. We learn from this pasuk that a minchas chavitin. Is completely incinerated on the Mizbech, right? Kalal Takhtar. Ainli Alel Yoyna. Minchas Kain Gal. The Kalal Takhtar. Perhaps. Only the, uh, you see, the, um, the Psukim there talk about Minchas Chavitin, Kalal Takhtar. And then later it says, next Pasuk it says, every Mincha that every Kain brings, every Mincha that a Kain brings, Kalal Tialati Achlas, completely burnt on the Mizbech, not going to be eaten by Kehanim. In contrast to a regular mincha that Yisrael brings, there's kmitzah which goes on his back and the rest is eaten by the kayanam. By a mincha of a kayan, a donated mincha, every mincha, complete on his back. You don't need it. Loytiach. So interestingly, we find this sort of difference in language. By the mincha chavit in the pasuk uses the term kol taktar. It's fully burnt. By in describing a regular, you know, voluntary mincha of a kayan, it says loytiach don't eat. So here it says, don't eat, but it doesn't speak about completely burning it. There it says, completely burn it, but it doesn't say anything about not eating it. So we want to cross things over and compare notes. And the Allah, al yoyna minchas kongal, called tikta, perhaps called tikta, which tells you it's fully burnt, that only applies to the upper mincha, the previous mincha, discussed earlier, minchas kongal, minchas chavit. But and likewise in the second mincha, which is the minchas kongal, had yet, discussed later, there's a law against eating it. Let's compare notes. Can we apply the not eating stipulation to the Minchas Kohen Gadol and vice versa, the um, fully incinerating requirement of the Minchas Kohen Gadol? Can we apply it to a regular Mincha? How do we know to cross notes and to apply the element of the Minchas Kohen Gadol to a regular Mincha and vice versa? In both contexts, the Torah employs the word Kalal. By the Chavitin it says Kalal Taktar, by the regular Men Chavikoyin it says Kalal Tia, we compare Kalal Kal, Nemal Khan Kalal, we have Kalal over here by the Chavitin, Nemal Khan Kalal, we have the word Kalal by the Mechas Nadav Avikoyin, Ma Khan by Kalal Taktar, Nemal Khan Kalal Taktar, just like over there by the Chavitin, completely burnt, likewise by Mechas Nadav Avikoyin as well. Umal Khan Litin Lois Asal Echelosa, and just like by the ordinary Men Chavikoyin it says don't eat it, there's a love against eating it, Afkan here as well, Litin Lois Asal Echelosa, there's a love against eating it. Okay, so that's the point of kolol, taktar, to enable this zirashava to compare notes. Now, one more point in terms of Rabbi Shimon's shita, who says that uh, in the interim, the community finances the the chavitim. Rabbi Rabbi Shimon, Mishal Tzibud, Arais, he holds that it's sourced in the pasuk. It's not just a you know an established uh, practice that the Chachamim established. At we have a Mishnah Mesach Hashgal where it seems like this was established by the Chachamim. It wasn't sourced in a pasuk as per our Gemara. Amar Rav Shimon, Rav Shimon himself was speaking. He says, "Guess what? I have a list of seven takanos. Shiva Dvaram Miskinu Bezn Bezn established seven takanos. And this, following uh, the one that he's going to speak about now, is one of them, which is Oyved Kechavim Shesholach Oylosim Dinasiyam. Let's say a guy sends a carbon oil from far away." He's allowed to bring an oil, right? But he didn't uh, send all the uh, <laughs> trimmings, all the accessories. What about the nesachim? So it depends. Shalachim on nesachim. Sent along, you know, uh, money to pay for the nesachim. Crave mishalai, so uh, that pays for it. Vimla, but if he failed to do that, crave mishal tzibur. There's takana that tzibur will finance the nesachim. That's one takana. Number two, v'chein ger shemais v'nech Likewise, a convert that passed away without any family and uh, he left over kabbanis. What do we do with it? 
Sorry, sure, we can offer the Kabbalists, but who's going to pay for the Nesachim? So again, the same system, Yesh and Nesachim, give him if he established some Nesachim, if he designated some Nesachim during his lifetime, that goes. Vimlav, Kerem, Shal, Tzibur, otherwise the Tzibur finances it. Number three, and this pertains to our discussion with Tanai Bezden. There was an established practice by the Bezden, who, Al Kohen Gadol Shomeis, oh, Kohen Gadol passes away, Veloi Minu Al Kohen Achar Tachtov, and during this interim period, until they appoint a new one, who's going to offer the mincha? The public will pay for the mincha. So it's a takanas bezin. Whereas in our Gemara, Rabbi Shimon sources it in the Pasik. How does this work? There were actually two uh, stages in the takana that happened at different times. You see, the starting point was the Raisa Mid Tzibur. In our Torah, Based on the pasuk we discussed before, the public has to pay for it. Mishal Eilam, right? Chak Eilam Mishal Eilam. Now, what happened? Times became difficult. Kivon the Chaza, once the Chacham noticed, the Kamit Chakalishka, the Lishka, the chamber, the the, the, the treasury uh, was uh, getting depleted. And Rashi explains because unfortunately, this was during the second base of Midrash, there were many unscrupulous kind of Gedolim, and they were just going like flies every year. Nukain Gadol, right? They died on, on Yom Kippur because they entered the Kaddish Hakadoshim, right? So. They were running out of money. They kept on financing these uh, interim periods. They switched the system. Takinu l'gavam yershim. Chacham switched the system. They required the yershim of the kain gadol to pay for the mincha until further notice. But it didn't really hold up very long because the yershim weren't really committed to the cause. Given the chaz of the but they saw the yershim were just neglecting it. So sort of a cash 22 it's hard for us to finance it but at least we'll do it here it wasn't happening Okumo de Raisa they re-established the they reverted back to the Raisa Shita the Raisa system where the Tzibu would pay for it so both both things are true both things are emes according to Rabshim the Tzibu pays for it but not Torah that was the uh, original system then it was switched to the Yershim then it was put back to the uh, to the tzibur, as per the Mishnah Shkolem, which is speaking about the next stage, right, the final stage where it was uh, returned back to the tzibur's responsibility. Okay, once we're on the topic of the takanis, there's another halacha in that Mishnah as well. Chacham established val parash layu moyalam be'afra. This is the paraduma ashes. The minute takana that if one uses the ashes, it's not considered like diverting, you know, holy property for personal use and a commitment and a violation of Mi'ilah. No. There's no issue with that. Ask the Gemara, why do we need the Bezin to um, provide that leniency? The Raisi, that's sourced in the Torah, the Sanya, Chatasi. The Pasuk in describing the Paraduma calls it Chatasi. We learn that the Paraduma animal is like any carbon and if one partakes in it, he does Mi'ilah. But only the carbon itself, he. From the word he we learn Bomay alam. Meal only applies to the actual animal itself, the cow. But, um, but Afra were on the base of an alam. But Afra in my alam. But there's no meal by partaking in the ashes. So that's what I'll tell you. Why do we need a special Takanas Bezin to absolve the ashes from, uh, to exempt the ashes from meal? Amr of Ashi, once again, it was all history here. And it went through, it evolved through different stages. Shtay Takanas Habay. There were really two Takanas. The truth is, you're right. They raise minatayra. Strictly speaking, bo mayalan be efrei mayalan. There's only meal on the actual cow, but not on the efer. But then the chacham saw that people were being negligent. They were being careless. Keeping the chazo to come mezazliba. Chacham saw that people took advantage of this exemption. Who can avdi minayilu makas and they use the ashes for personal use to smear on their wounds to heal their wounds. Okay, so they belittled, they, 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 they took advantage of the... They had to put a stop to it. Goz Remila. They announced, okay, going forward there's Mila. Mila Medera Bonon, you can't use it. For personal use. Given the Chazot, the Kaparshim, is Safak Azois. But it had to... It had opposite effect. Now people were discouraged from using the uh, Afer Paraduma for any situation which wasn't 100% required. Suffolk as always. A person runs into a Suffolk tumor. He's not sure. Well, he was in an area which had some tumor. Maybe, maybe not. Right? 
he wouldn't, uh, he would hesitate to use the Yefer Parav, concerned that if he really doesn't need it, then it's Meila. So it backfired. Okmo the Raisa, they restored the original Din Raisa, and they said, you know what, there's no Meila, and that's the stage that the mission is talking about. The Chachamim suspended the Meila, which they had applied due to the, uh, you know, circumstance. They removed it, they, 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 they canceled it, and put it back on its original system, that there is no Meila on the Yefer. Okay, let's recap today's daf. The Michal Schavit of the Ken Godel is processed, um, is made even on Shabbos, even Batuma. We have several psukim. We learned about adding more than the standard oil, whether it's because of the Pasuk Bashemen or the Pasuk of Tzuelis Menachatamid, for a total of three log puri sarin. What happens if the Ken Godel passes away and they have not yet appointed a new one? Rabida says the Yarshim will uh, bring it and the Rabbi Shemin says the Tziba will bring it. We have psukim for either Rashita. But either way, Shlema is a Kreva, which according to one shot in Rashi means that it's brought as a completed Sarin twice uh, a day. Here we did learn that according to Shimon, even though Menatera, the Tzibur brings it, but the Chachamim uh, at a certain point switched it to the Yarshim, but then it was reverted back to the, to the Tzibur, um, which also explains somewhat the Aloha of the Para, which also went through two stages. Initially, there was no Me'ila, and that's how it was at the end of the day as well. All the best to you, and that's the Chorab.